Well, I've got a lot packed into this video, so I hope you'll stay with me until the end. I have good news and also some bad news to report. I'll save the bad news for the end. Anyway, let's get started. Well, that was about a 30 minute test run in total and it stayed right about 170 degrees for the duration of the run all the gears work it is a four speed with a reverse if i didn't mention that before the clutch itself feels really good it grabs hard the brake adjustment i did a couple videos ago is good the brakes grab very well um, the seat is comfortable enough once you're in it but the step is kind of high to get up in there and I don't have a whole lot of room to get my leg down in there. I want to climb in on and off, but once I'm in, I'm good. My only complaint, I think, about the design, the clutch pedal seems to be pretty far to the left. So it really feels like when I'm sitting in the operator's position, you know, it really feels like I'm sticking my leg far out in that direction to uh, operate the clutch. 
you know, it's not terrible. It's just an observation. I also took off the distributor cap and put some dielectric grease on the distributor shaft where the points make contact with the shaft lobes. You really don't want to run it with that shaft dry. All right, here's the bottom of the oil bath air cleaner. I got it all painted up nice, clean on the inside. So I'm gonna fill it up with oil just below that rib right there. Then this baffle goes in next. There's a lip inside here that it sits on, like that. And then there's a retaining clip. It's ready to be installed. Yeah, I'm going to put the uh, cap on temporarily. All right, let's do the fuel line. On the carburetor side here, I have a uh, 90 degree elbow, one eighth to one quarter adapter. The one eighth is the carburetor side. And I just put a little bit of gas oil on the threads just because I've had success with that in the past. Right about there. We'll adjust it if we need to. And on the sediment bowl side, I'm using a one eighth to one quarter straight adapter. You can see right back there. It looks like they made a gap in the bracket for the uh, air cleaner assembly that goes all the way through behind it and comes out the other side. I guess that's where they intended the uh, fuel line to run. So I guess I'll try that first. If it doesn't work, we'll go with plan B. And if that's the case, I guess I need to rotate the sediment bowl this way a little bit so the fitting points more directly at the hole. Okay, we'll try that. First leak test. Okay, so far so good. I'm gonna leave the fuel on while I do a couple other things and come back to it just to make sure. But that looks good and I'm happy with the way uh, I've got it routed. I think that'll be uh, satisfactory. Yesterday morning, I got the new valve cover gasket installed and hopefully sealed. The other one was just 
crushed and brittle and it didn't stand much of a chance. That's why it was leaking. So I don't think this one's gonna leak. And I did uh, follow the instructions and I gave it a full 24 hours for the uh, sealant to set up on there. So I think it's time to get this thing fired up again. Check the valve cover gasket, make sure that doesn't leak. Make sure we don't have any fuel leaks on this side with the new fuel line that we just ran. Now that I've got the entire oil bath air cleaner installed, I might have to adjust the carburetor mixture again. I don't know. We'll uh, be prepared to do that if necessary. Well, I struggled with the strap for a while. I could have made it easier on myself by uh, getting longer screws. But I got those on nice and securely. I also got all the hood screws uh, installed up front and also tightened the big bolts in the front corners of the uh, radiator to the frame rails. So those are nice and secure. And on the other side over here, you can tell the uh, previous owner cut off that curved piece to accommodate the uh, alternator. I think overall the hood is in pretty poor condition. Um, it doesn't look too bad down the sides. But the top is pretty wrinkly. I've actually got another complete hood here in my parts collection. It's not in the best condition, but uh, looking at it a little bit more closely, uh, it might be straighter. So that might be an option for the future. If you see this hole right here on the top right side of the radiator, I believe that was for the radiator shutter control rod. And you can see this radiator no longer has shutters. It's probably one of those things that when people do radiator work or replace the radiator sometimes, those shutters just never get reinstalled. Now 
I went with vinyl stickers this time. Thought I'd give those a try. So I'm gonna prepare my surfaces with some good glass cleaner, then finish up with some rubbing alcohol, make sure it's completely dry. All right, here's the leftover stickers that I'm not going to install. Radiator shutters, uh, fill battery, this distilled water, uh, the snap coupler sticker, and this sticker with the oil filter element part number. One was supposed to go here, right below the drain cock, that said something to the effect of drain here and at the radiator. It was just a tiny little sticker. And uh, I don't know if this is too porous for it or what, but it did not want to stick despite my best efforts. So that one did not get on. So here's a rundown of all the decals that I put on today. If you remember from previous videos, the hydraulic system was not working at all.
Well, I finally got that figured out. Well, that's the good news, but making a long story short, the hydraulic fluid is leaking inside the tractor internally down into the transmission differential fluid chamber. In other words, the hydraulic system won't hold fluid, which is causing the rear lift rams not to work. And then by leaking down into the transmission side, it cross contaminates the hydraulic fluid with the transmission and differential oils which in itself is not the end of the world, but what's worse is it grossly overfills the transmission chamber with oil, which in turn can blow out other seals and cause additional issues. Unfortunately, the only way uh, to replace that seal is to split the tractor. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know, but I think that's right. So obviously that's kind of a big job and I just don't have the room to accomplish that right now. My shop is not that big and it's crammed full with vehicles and tractors. And that's definitely not a job I want to try to accomplish out here in the dirt for several different reasons. So this might have to wait until I get my uh, bigger shop built which is probably going to still be a year or two into the future at this point. I was planning on using this tractor to uh, grade my long driveway in the big area in front of our house here. Up until now, I've been using the uh, Ford 2N to do that, and it's, it's actually been doing a great job. But I was looking forward to putting the blade on this 45 horsepower tractor and really being able to uh, dig in and you know, drag some rock around. So in the meantime, it'll just have to wait. Um, I'm very happy overall with this WD-45. I've learned a lot about the Alice Chalmers uh, design, their tractors, a little bit about their company even that I've researched. I am very impressed with this tractor. It seems to be very well built, uh, very good quality, powerful, so except for the rear hydraulics, the tractor is going to be completely uh, operational. It runs great. I couldn't be happier about the engine and the transmission and the general condition. Despite the setback, I still plan to finish that video on the rear hitch system, draw bar, and my mostly homemade three-point conversion, which I'll show you. And I'll probably do that within a few weeks just so I'll have it done. And at least with the draw bar attached, I'll be able to pull and haul with it. So we'll make this a wrap. Thanks for hanging in there with me, and we'll see you next time.